Welcome to the American Rambler with your host Paul Grofton. Uh, today we have something that's coming from Pakistan or, or India. I'm not too sure. I'm not too good with geography. Okay. But this is typical. It's more universal. It's about the unrealistic standards uh, that females have placed on men. And all this dating advice coming from these women who can't seem to find a good man. Which is quite laughable. Because guess what? All your good men are around you. Okay? Why would you be friends with a man that is not a good man? The reality is he does not meet up to your incredibly high standards and your personal low value, low contribution rates. So here one, from Uttar Pradesh, bride calls off wedding as groom fails to read newspaper without glasses. Yes, really. And a unique incident, no, I don't think this is unique, a bride in Uttar Pradesh all right, called off her wedding because the groom could not read the newspaper without his spectacles. Not only was the wedding called off, a case against the groom and his family was also registered. Archana, the bride from Jamlapur village of Siddhar Katwa area, was also set to marry Shivam, a resident of Banshi village. Until the day of the marriage, the bride's family was unaware of the groom's weak eyesight. It was only when the bright-eyed and other women from her family noticed that the groom was wearing spectacles for a good part of the day of the wedding, they felt suspicious about it and asked him to read a newspaper without glasses as a test. The groom, who could not see without his glasses, failed the test. Consequently, through unanimous decision of the bride's family, uh, the bride's family was involved. The marriage was called off. The bride's father, Arjun Singh, said, I had no idea of the groom's eyesight. Well, guess what? Everybody's eyesight goes bad. Even yours truly. The bride's family then demanded that the grooms return the cash and the motorcycle given as a dowry along with all the expenses they had incurred for the marriage. An FRR was lodged at the police station in Harari when the groom's family refused the demand. The bride's father also added the police had tried to sort the matter through the mutual understanding the groom's family never turned up. Now the reality here is all these women that are looking for a good man. No, you're not looking for a good man. You're looking for a rich man. You're looking for the Jeff Bezos, the Mark Cubans, the Elon Musk of the world. You are not looking for a good man. So, ladies, I'm going to give you one very important piece of advice. Shut up. No, you heard me say that. Shut up. I do not want to hear advice coming from you giving men advice on dating. You guys give the worst advice. You give the opposite advice. When I moved to the Ukraine and I was taught, I was actually taught to do everything opposite of what feminists, and all you women uh, were told to do. In other words, you know, wait three days before calling her so she can think. Instead, you had to call her within three days. Okay? Bring a gift to her that's just polite, that's good manners. If a woman suggests a different restaurant, walk away. Because if a woman accepts a date, she's into you. 
It is considered poor manners for a Ukrainian woman to suggest a person take her to a different place. Okay. All right. Now, this one is a hard one uh, to get over. But one of the things is they say here that you have to conquer a woman's heart. So sometimes you might have to take some risks. So you can't just compliment her, her beauty. You have to show her in a physical way. She might say no, and that's the end of it. But you're not going to get me too from her. Okay, now that's the first point. The second point. Okay, if you want a good man, look to your friends. Look to your male friends around you. Those are good men. Essentially, those are good men you have rejected or that you are hoping uh, that they'll still be around when you enter your so-called beta male phase. For one thing, there is no such thing as a beta male. There are no such things as an alpha male. Okay? Okay. We, we switch roles dependent on our expertise. Okay, my friend who is an accountant is not going to listen to me on where the debits and the credits are because that's his expertise. But if he wants to know more on history or grammar, he will ask me. Okay, we switch roles dependent on what our needs are going to be at the time. Men are cooperative. Women are the ones with the social hierarchy. Okay, point number three. Especially this is for both the women and the so-called incels out there. There is no such thing as an incel. Depending on the money, you can get sex. The type of sex you can get is the type is dependent on your money. You know, you can go get a $20 hooker down the stroll, or if you have a lot of money, uh, she might dole it out for free in hopes that you're going to take her somewhere or if you take her somewhere. The fact of the matter is these incels are really in rels. They believe of having sex within a relationship. But these women don't find these men attractive enough, but they find them useful. Therefore, they set goals that they are supposed to meet. Unfortunately, some of these women set the goals and then when these so-called incels, which I'm going to start referring to as inrels, they move the goal because they don't want to put out. They met those goals. Or they use some convoluted BS so as not to fill, fulfill their part of the social contract. So the reality is these women are con artists. They're using these men for what they can bring them. So in rels, knock it off, stop it. I'm not saying you have to join the MGTOW community or anything. But just walk away. Know your value. Point number four. No, you guys keep deflecting. See, what you guys want is somebody that has already built something. Guess what? My mom and my dad built something together. 
they both started at the same place. My mom could have worked her way up. Corporate ladder, she could have worked with my grandfather at his business. But no, they felt it was more important that they work together as a team. Here is the point, the team. You know, I hear it's like, oh, a $10,000 diamond ring. Yeah, like my dad actually was uh, on an army salary. He was going to have $10,000 ring as a sergeant. <laughs> no, not going to happen. And secondly, why does he need to have that ring? Okay, if you're interested, if you're truly interested in a good man, then money is not the issue. Okay, you are interested in a man. I worked with a lawyer. Uh, once and he said 80% of his female clients were only got married so they could get a divorce so that would be their that would be their retirement fund so why should men get married my friend gives me this example says if you start a business and after a couple of years, it becomes successful, and you need to hire some help. Now, okay, but here's a new rule. You hire that help, and whether or not that help that you hired quits or gets fired, you still have to continue paying that help. Would you do it? No. So why should men get married? Another thing is, do you remember the story about the little red rooster? Or the little red hen? Who baked bread and always asked for help and no, everyone was too busy to help with the baking the bread? So if you did not help me build my empire, then you have no right to it. I'm actually, I am not upset with, uh, with what Megan Bezos, uh, no, she was there from the beginning. That's fine. If you're there from the beginning, but if you're the one waiting at the finish line, you deserve nothing. Okay, and now here's advice to Sarah Gonzalez, you know, saying, oh, believe in femininity. Well, guess what? A lot of men believe in femininity too, but it takes more than just makeup to make a woman a woman, okay, or a lady. You can be the prettiest woman in the world. But if your personality is ugly, then I don't want you. I was recently watching a podcast, uh, and all I could see were these bitter women, 30 plus, with caked on makeup, upset that people did not hand, thing, hand the world over to them. Okay, well, guess what? He was right, you know. The world is not fair. Hey, I'm not the tallest person uh, on the planet. I'm not 6'1". So I'm going to be rejected off right a lot of times from you women. Fortunately, moving to the Ukraine, uh, a good woman... Uh, and higher standards. Okay. It is much better than being stuck with a lot of insufferable women. So you try and remember, men have choices. 
we have plenty of choices and we have been exercising them. Even one of our choices is just walking away altogether. No, we're not rejected because we can't get uh, laid. We have been rejecting you. We have been rejecting the system. You provide nothing for us. You have quantified and sold everything that made you unique. You no longer have anything left. Okay? You told us, oh, men can cook, so we learn to cook. You told us men can sew, so we learn to sew. But guess what? Our dads also taught us to fix cars and build houses. What value do women have left? Now, here's another study. You know, saying, oh, we can provide you uh, with lineage. Well, guess what? This study says one-third, which I believe is higher, of the uh, of uh, fathers are not with their biological children. Well, guess what? Uh, you don't even provide that. There's no guarantee that you're going to provide us with that with lineage. She's saying another psychologist says seventy percent of her clientele is women that cheat on their husbands. 70%. Yeah. No. Guess, guess what? We don't want that. We don't want somebody like you in our lives. You guys defined what we wanted without even asking what we want. You said, oh, the only thing men want is sex. No. The only thing you have left to offer is sex. And some of us prefer a less complicated way of achieving that. All right, so, so men, value yourself, respect yourself. Your identity is not based on the women uh, that you date. And women, shut up and start listening and start protesting court decisions about giving all this alimony you know tell the feminists go shut up that this don't forget to check below for additional content